And here I am, afraid, an old 25 year old woman, you know, shaking my way down the slopes. forward to hooking you hopefully you stay so this next series of videos that I'm gonna do is gonna be kind of based on frequently asked questions anyone who's moved to Norway from anywhere else has usually kind of been asked the same sort of questions by family and friends from back home or elsewhere some of the, the most frequently asked questions are but isn't it cold isn't it dark are there any black people over there um, so I'm going to take advantage of that and um, use a couple of videos to answer those questions. I could obviously just answer in a sentence or two, but that's no fun. So I'm going to do it this way instead. Um, the first question I'm going to tackle is how do you survive the cold over there? So right now, as I'm shooting this video, it's um, the middle of winter in Bergen. I personally think Bergen's having an uncharacteristically good winter. The sky is blue, um, it's been dry all day, it's probably gonna rain later on, but c'est la vie. So basically, um, Bergen is famous for having, yeah, two seasons, spring and autumn. Technically, um, we have four seasons here, um, spring, summer, um, autumn and winter, but summer and autumn basically look exactly the same. It's an average temperature of around 10 degrees Celsius and rain for most of the year. In spring, you might get a couple of days of sunshine um, with all the beautiful flowers blooming and that's super nice. Um, and then towards October, November, December, it's just, I mean, it's dark most of the day you might get six hours of real daylight actually for me the cold isn't the problem bergen is not that much colder than johannesburg i think um truth be told johannesburg can get down to like minus five degrees in the winter easily bergen very rarely i've been told gets beyond minus five um when it does it might feel a little bit colder because of wind chill but bergen is not that cold but yeah, so how do people actually survive winter in Norway? So when I first moved here, I mean, I just didn't get it. First of all, around Christmas, everyone is so obsessed with Christmas. And I found it so interesting because the majority, I don't know if it's a majority, but many Norwegians are what you'd say, would call atheist or agnostic, but they get so excited about Christian holidays. So I just didn't really understand the logic behind it. But, um, what I think I get now is that having that thing to look forward to in those cold, dark, wet months of November, December, um, it kind of gives people something to live for. So baking uh, gingerbread men and decorating your house for Christmas and filling your entire home with tea lights and lighting the fireplace, stuff like that, it kind of gives you something to look forward to in the winter, particularly in the winter months you hear about people going to the hitta um, and you know just having a costly time it's basically there's no very specific direct translation of the word costly into english um but it basically encompasses um coziness and comfort and um warmth and enjoyment it's costly nice you want to snuggle up in your blanket and be romantic and read a book and just ah, and i think that's really a very big part of how people survive winter in norway people who live in the eastern parts and the northern parts of norway they get snow a lot sooner than we do here in bergen and when it snows there it snows for real it's not unusual to have minus 20 degrees celsius over in oslo i remember a few years ago i had to go to oslo to register to vote South African election and I landed there and I wasn't dressed for you know a couple of feet of snow and I it, it was only I was only there for a couple of hours as well so it was a little bit jarring to go from one climate to another and back it was very strange um, but snow helps a lot when, when it's snowing 
everything outside just seems lighter. You don't even notice that you don't have that many hours of daylight. And in addition to that, the sky is usually, like you don't have those heavy gray overcast clouds. And because of that, everything just seems lighter and area. And the biggest exciting thing of the season is skiing or snowboarding, but mostly skiing. Norwegians are mad about skiing. People told me this before I moved here. Um, and I kind of acknowledged it, but I wasn't prepared for how crazy they would be about it. In my mind, I thought, okay, after, you know, 10, 15 years of skiing, you must, it must just become a normal thing. You don't really get that excited about it. But if you see the way people's eyes light up when they're like, oh, it's got the she in hell. They get so excited every single time. I'm telling you, these people are practically born on their skis. You see, this, these little small creatures already on skis, they look like little space people and they're like little ski suits and their little helmets. <laughs> I was so fascinated by it. But they were there zipping down the mountain alongside me and past me. And I just thought, and here I am, afraid, an old 25-year-old woman, you know, shaking my way down the slopes. However long they're able to stand on these skis, I'm telling you, Norwegians will ski. When I went to Hemsedal last year with a group of friends, we were there for about a week. Oh, some of us were there for about a week, but it was like, it was amazing. It was a fantastic ski trip. It's nice to have something to look forward to when it's cold and you don't want to be cooped up inside all the time. As nice as a fireplace with some candles and a good book and lots of food, you know, lots of comfort food. That's a good way to survive. That's why I'm... Yeah. Uh, as, as nice as those things can be, you do get frustrated with being indoors all the time. And it's nice to have that thing to go and do outside. Uh, you know, spend five, six hours skiing, come back to the cabin exhausted and, you know, start cooking and sipping and just like, munching and munching and munching until you just fall asleep. It is absolutely fantastic. Um, that's the other thing. I'm going to make an entire video just on cabin life because cabin culture is basically year round. It's just so nice. When I went to Hemsedal, I could compare it to South Africans who go to like sand parks. Yeah, if you go to any of the, the sand parks, the atmosphere there is always just lively and it's this communal feeling of, oh, we just want to be out here and enjoy nature and have a good braai. Going to Hemsedal reminded me a little bit of um, when you go to the Kruger National Park and you're staying in one of these like camps, the braai facilities will be outside. Sometimes they might have some communal facilities there. But I remember, I can't remember which, which camp it was. We were outside braaiing and there was someone in the chalet over there who was also braaiing and someone in the chalet over there who was also braaiing. And you just know that if you just walked up to them and, you know, cheers, you can start a conversation, you know, everyone's just there to have a good time all in the name of braaiing and, and being out in nature. And I think that skiing is the Nordic equivalent of that. I remember skiing down a green slope because I just barely graduated to blue slopes and I like my life. There was like this big crew of like young people and they were blasting music and eating and drinking presumably and just chilling there in the sun while people were skiing past. Guess who's gonna be on the slopes again this year? This girl. Yeah, but basically, in summary, getting through the winter and the darkness, the cold isn't the problem. The darkness bugs me, but you have to come up with coping mechanisms. And I realize that's, be that's what's behind Norwegians and their obsession with tea lights and candles and baking things throughout the winter and going away and skiing every single weekend. I understand it now, I get it. Keep your mind busy and keep your body busy. That's literally it. That's how you survive the cold and the darkness. If you liked my video, then I would really appreciate if you give it a thumbs up and always come back to check for new videos. I'm gonna try and post one video every two weeks on a Wednesday and until then, see you next time.